for our Atlanta Falcons, Hawks, and Atlanta United. Your teams play here. Sports Radio 92.9, the game. But it is my man, Triple, so we can start the show with a big hearty, hey, hey man. man. And we'll tell you why we're here. It's the media day. And I know that nobody would take greater pleasure in watching media members maybe fall to the ground and pass out, like our next guest, <laughs> technical director of Atlanta United. Over under uh, 20 Achilles <laughs> today. I'm Carlos Bocanegra. <laughs> hey, man, how you been, brother? Everything good? good. Hey, get that mic closer for him. Gee, we can get you tight so we can hear you. Yeah, but, yeah. The hot button, the Achilles here. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, don't, bad, don't mention Ooh, that. I yeah. know, I know. Sorry. Yeah. I'm thinking more about, like, heat stroke for some I of the, strike that from yeah, the record. Some of the members of the media that are, you know, maybe need some cardio. Hey, man, love the moves, by the way. We haven't talked to you since the moves went down uh, during the, uh, the, the the summer trade window. And, uh, you know, I know over the years, it seems like we were asking all the time, like, can we find another Darlington Nagby? And I know that, as you reminded me, Darlington Nagby's don't grow on trees. And I reminded the listeners, especially United fans, that Nagby want to be back in Columbus. Now, why, Nagby, I like why anyone would want to go and live in Columbus, that's his prerogative. <laughs> but do we have somebody maybe in Mayamba who can do a little of the stuff that he was doing? Yeah, he, look, he's a fantastic player. Um, Darling, Darlington was excellent. Right. Uh, we loved him here. Fantastic for the club. Um, Tristan has come in and really shown a little bit about his, you know, what he can do. He's an all-action midfielder. Right. Offensively, helps us progress the ball forward. You see his calmness under pressure, uh, but then his ability to break up play. That yeah. was something we were looking for a little bit in our midfield uh, to add a little bit of athleticism, a little bit more dynamic, and uh, a little bit of someone who can, when we're out on the press, get out and, and win the ball, right. and then have the ability to track back, catch people, track them down, and win the ball, and, and help the defense. Uh, as you guys know, we, we've been scoring a lot of goals, but we've been giving up a lot of goals as well. So uh, trying to find that balance, and uh, he's definitely a big part of uh, what we tried to build for the second half of this season. Well, not the second half, the last 10 games of the season, really, right. for the push into the playoffs. What's the anatomy of a championship team? You think in basketball it used to be you have to have the rim protector, a lockdown defender, an elite scorer. How does that apply to uh, to soccer, you think? Yeah, it's similar. I mean, down the spine of the team, you want to have your leadership, your players that are performing the best. Uh, that, that's really uh, the important positions. And then, uh, you know, you have your three designated players in our league, and you need those guys to produce. Uh, you've got, you know, the other guys need to step up and be role players, but uh, – you know, to, to break it down and answer your question, it, I don't know if there's any special sauce or special rep- mm-hmm. recipe because teams build differently. Uh, here at Atlanta, we want to be exciting and high-flying and scoring goals, but now we, all, we have to balance that a little bit with yeah. the, the defensive side as well right. uh, because that ultimately is going to win you the championship. It is the technical director, Carlos Bocan. Every guy's are live here at Atlanta United. We'll talk about, I got to be honest, there's really not much to talk about from last night's Falcons game. We will chop that up <laughs> later in the show, but exhibitions, we'll man. We'll be on our way through that yeah. segment. Preseason. I got to tell you, I got great seats behind the bench uh, for tomorrow against Nashville, and I'm stoked. I like, I like, I love the moves we made. I know that there were some guys, you know, that maybe, you know, for, for point, for dollar, it wasn't working out, so you moved them out. But it just seems like when, when Amongst other things, when Yorgos is healthy, man, this team just pops. It just seems like you got a guy that can finish to the things you're saying to get the ball in scoring position. It, uh, I mean, he's he's been fantastic for us this year. Coming in, big guy, leadership on the field. You see how he presses. I think something that people didn't notice in the Seattle game was, and, and I got to watch that live, so sometimes it's not on camera, but his chasing back and, you know, defending of the corner kicks and heading the ball out. So not only is he scoring goals for us and a, a threat and a presence up top, but tracking back sliding away you know heading balls out on defense it's just he's done it both sides of the ball so it's been a big lift for us right um the other thing that i've liked about the last two games that we played with cruz azul and and now um seattle where i did feel we had a bit more of the balance in the team and i think uh one of the big reasons caleb wiley at, at left back he's really grown this year uh we've been able to to utilize him as almost a shutdown defender so you know, something something you were talking about earlier. But his one-on-one defending is excellent. He still has that engine to get forward. Uh, and the kid's 18. And, like, it's been really impressive to watch his growth and us now relying on him to be a major part of locking down this defense for the back half of the year. You know, uh, the, your championship year, you guys were uh, so dominant. Now it seems like the whole league is caught up. But I think that actually makes the product better as a whole. But it can also be a burden as well, right? Yeah, well, it's it is. challenging. But the league is going in the right direction. Yeah. And, um Every week is competitive. I mean, look, Nashville, who we're playing this weekend, will have 65,000 in the building, which is awesome. They set up completely different than us, and they have a completely different makeup. And you know what? They've been really successful and, and been a, a real success as an expansion franchise right. on the field and off the field. 
Cincinnati this year who had a you know few tough seasons. They're flying. They've got mm-hmm. some a different makeup. So uh, it's been cool to see the evolution of the league. Uh, and and you've got ownerships that are willing to to spend. Training grounds like this are being built. You know all over the country now, which is like, it's fantastic for our sport. I've heard some of the European officials talking about how a lot of MLS facilities are better than the ones you see in the elite leagues over in Europe. They are. So most of the facilities in the United States in general will be better than anything you get in Europe outside of maybe a couple of the top clubs in the country. Right. Carlos Bogenegger's with us, guys. We're live here at Atlanta United's training facility, Children's Healthcare of Atlanta training grounds. The uh, the messy thing is crazy. I know that they're the, la- they're the worst team in the league, and it's almost like I felt like as a, you took like the New York Cosmos from 77 and, and just like dropped him in to Miami, you know, with, with Busquets and, I mean, you name it. They got everything cooking. Good or bad for the league? Obviously, the, the buzz is insane. I went, I'm one of those dudes who dropped the money on Apple to go get it to watch Messi. Yep. I was a little jealous of what they got right now. We want to say he will play on yeah. turf. And he, so that's, <laughs> that's another thing. I can't imagine. That's going to be electric if he plays here in September. Yeah, it's good. I mean, I, I'm a little surprised that he's been able to carry them this much. Now, Busquets is a right. fantastic player as well. Jordi Alba coming in. Right. You know, that Chris Henderson uh, has, has done a really nice job trying to put some pieces around him as well as the, the big star Messi. But, um, it's interesting. We'll see how he, him and his squad go for. I think they've got 12 games left right. in the season. In the heat, you know, week after week, having to put it together. I think they've got yeah. about what they have to win eight games or something right. like that to, to get into the playoffs. So it's gonna be tough. Now you play internationally. It seems like when the British or inter, when international come here to the states, everyone gets blown away by the travel. Like you know, wow. Like I forget who said it to us a couple of years ago. Uh, I was like, man, America's a very big country. Yeah. You know, because in England it's like you know, it's a 45 minute flight somewhere. Here it's yeah. it's a it's a day's trip. Yeah, yeah, and we uh, we just had a few of our guys going to our trip to Seattle, right? And getting off the plane, going, "Whew, where are we?" You know, we're, like, <laughs> we're, we're still in America, guys. Yeah. Still in America. So no, the travel's tough. You have the heat, the different conditions, the different fields, the, like altitude. We've got it all here, so it's right. gonna be interesting. Hey, one more question for you. The, you how's your? I mean, we know that you and Darren obviously built something that was unbelievable, and and now we're trying to get back there. How's your How's your collaborative effort with Garth? How does that work, you and Garth, as far as how these decisions get made? Yeah, it's been good. So he's come in. Obviously, he had a lot of experience as a as a GM. Uh, he ran Salt Lake. He he ran uh, Seattle. Both of those clubs uh, did really well. Had a lot of success. So uh, it's nice coming in, bouncing ideas off each other. Uh, he's done it at a high level. We've been here uh, doing it at a high level for a while. So now you get these conversations of, all right, how are we looking at it long term? What's the structure of the team? What's the makeup of the team? How are we building our youth? How are we building the second team? So um, that's been that's been really cool for me. Uh, I was, was excellent with Darren, and Darren did a great job. And now he's had a, a really cool opportunity with Newcastle United. Um, so fantastic for him. But then, right. yeah, coming here just, I think that the high-level soccer conversations, someone uh, – you know, if, if you're asking for a new person to come in or a new president to come in and, you know, try not to have too much disruption in the organization, someone that you come in to have high level conversations with that knows the league in and out, like it, okay. it's, it's been pretty smooth. I want to ask Garth this later on, so I'll throw it at you first. Uh, Amada going to be out for a minute? Looks like Tiago's happy here. Yeah, we hope so. I mean, I mean look, we, we would like to keep him through uh, the end of this year and let's see beyond how we've structured some of our deals this right. summer, bringing people in. Uh, have allowed us to keep him beyond uh, the winter if we would like to, where we're not handcuffed by some of the rules and regulations and cap in our league. So that was strategic and something we went out to do. But great kid. Um, he loves it here. He's been you know, really happy with, with the group. And at some point, he will go to Europe. He's a fantastic player. And that was also you know, the, the sales pitch, so to speak, coming right. here when I went down to Argentina. I'm talking to him. At some point, yes, he has the, the desire to go to Europe and, and play in Champions League, which he will. We can't offer that, right? right? Which which is okay, but you know it's it's fantastic. Miguel did the same thing. We've had quite a few others now leave the league. God, he's uh, thriving, isn't he? He's flying, and so yeah. it, it's really cool. But to to be able to attract the Tiagos of the world to come here, mm-hmm. and even if it's not for seven years of his career, you know, two, three, four years, fantastic. It's uh, Dukes and Bell with Rob Tribble. We're talking to Carlos Bocanegra, technical director, member of the U.S. men's national team, gazillion uh, caps for the Team USA. And then finally, speaking of cap, uh, caps for Team USA, Miles Robinson back. He hadn't played since June. What are the odds of keeping Miles out of his contract's uh, coming up? His contract is up, so we've got an, uh, an offer on the table for him. Um, no rush. Uh, he, great kid. Again, we'd love to have him for the long term. Right. He's, uh, I think, someone that we can build around in the community. He, he resonates well with our community, our fan base. Is our first draft pick overall. Yeah. So um, he's been excellent. The other part of that is, yeah, we, we missed him for two months, seven games. We didn't have him. And so, you know, when you talk about our defense improving, mm-hmm. making some of these moves, we're getting miles back, which 
Yeah. Not too bad. It's almost like a, signing a player. Yeah, not too right. bad to get a best 11 <laughs> defender back, a national team defender back into your squad. So, you know, we're, we're, we're looking forward to this, uh, the last few games of the season. Awesome. Well, hey, man, we're excited. I know that uh, it, it was a buzzkill not to be, you know, we, didn't, we always want to win cups. I know you and Darren always said win cups, but we'll get that leagues thing next year against Mexico and those guys. But that was fun. It was, I tell you what, not knowing what to expect as a fan, you know, other than we weren't in it because obviously yeah. once you lose, you're out. But I thought it was great television. It was, and it was frustrating. We wanted to advance. And right. Obviously, you saw the effort they put in that crucial school game and you know mm. maybe we get a, a break here or there with one of our, our shots going in mm. but i mean that's going to be a fantastic product and i think it's only going to increase the rivalry of our countries the national teams of bringing those leagues together but they're going to invest in it next year they don't want to lose right hey speaking of lose last year i think you scored what 12 goals against uh, joe patrick <laughs> <laughs> it was 11 I 11 <laughs> so joe was joe had like i think he only had like gave it one goal in the first half of the media tournament Four hat and and basically one hat. you got members of the coaching staff and, and carlos playing on a split squad with members of the media that covered Atlanta united so I, my first question is, where are the defibrillators? Is your ambulance <laughs> standing by? They're directly downstairs inside the double doors. <laughs> and we just saw some elite members of the media running for cover as the sprinklers just came the sprinklers on. sprinklers right? just came on. Yeah. stored their warm-up. Yeah. Well, probably, it probably feels pretty good, actually. Now, this, this is cool. Like, look, it's 20 years ago, you don't get soccer covers like this in the right. United States. Then fast forward, plus on steroids in Atlanta, we get such good coverage. The media, right. the fan base, there's a lot of interest. So mm. this is really cool. This is where the first team trains. I mean, the fields are beautiful, as you guys can see. Right. It's a fun event for us. It's 100 degrees. <laughs> I'm trying not to pull my hamstring, Mike. Right, right, um, right. You know, so, but other than that, it should be a, a wonderful event. What is the, um, I see a, a pitch being built over there now with some stands, basically. Is that for the academy? What is that for? So down there, that's our show pitch. That used to be turf, the same specs as Mercedes-Benz. Mm. Right. Um, we have a grass field next to it. A lot of times when teams want to come in here and train, uh, kind of as you see here, the two grass fields mm -hmm. side by side. So Arthur was saying, hey, we would like to continue to have these international teams come here when the World Cup is coming right. here, Copa America coming here. You know, we want to be a host uh, a host site, so to speak, a uh, training ground. And so that's going to be grass, and we'll be able to host all cool. the, the major federations. Yeah, I, I, got, I talked about being stoked after the performance in Seattle for tomorrow against Nashville. That Chelsea a double header was fantastic. That was, that was and to see Miggy score. That's the team, Chelsea. Yeah, yeah man. I, I, Darren got me a, a, a Newcastle jersey. I look like a stuffed sausage in the thing. So <laughs> I, I couldn't make up. One said you're down 17 pounds. Yeah, now I am. But hey, man, good good times, brother. Best of luck in this thing. Thank you, man. Final portion of the season. Carlos Bocanegra, technical director. We'll see him on the pitch. Lots of hydration breaks, I predict. Yeah. Hey, man, beautiful day today here in the A to be inside in air conditioning, watching uh, Atlanta's media elite getting after it. And, uh, again, they are streaming. I said it was on Atlanta United. It's actually on their YouTube page. So Mike Conti and Jason Longshore, if you want to see the action, they got uh, – it's, it's a very high uh, – it's a big budget. They got two cameras on this. <laughs> see the guys doing their thing. Joe Patrick has switched from goalkeeper to it looks like uh, some form of a, an attacker. I wonder uh, if Longshore and, uh, and Conti are kind of roasting. The proceedings. I would think you would. I think I, I you got so. to. So anyway, more on that coming or less. But right now, let's talk to the boss, man. He's the honcho, El, El Jefe, as we like to say around here. It's Garth Lagerway from Atlanta United. First of all, congratulations on the moves you made, man, during the transfer window. Thanks. And, and to come to you long show before you move on from that, it's definitely an anchor man type vibe. <laughs> That's <laughs> fantastic. Yeah. That's great. I love it. I love both, it. both of them have an individual fan pointed directly at their faces <laughs> and stuff like that. Now, the air is still 105 yes, degrees right, reflecting off the building. So it's like a lot of yeah. Well, it actually kind of watch them melting. Well, they always talk about, like, you know, the, the heat vortex in major cities. Yeah. When you got all this hot air with the media, I think it's going to be 103 <laughs> degrees out here <laughs> on the field, man. <laughs> hey, we talked about this with the Carlos Bocanegra about the transfers for years before you got here. We, we had, like, a NAGB, a NAGB cap. Because I know you know those guys, yep. as we said, that Carlos, they're just a unique talent. I love what I've seen in a small sample size from uh, Miyamba. Yep. And is that part of the, the design to just be better up down the middle? Yeah, yeah, we, we, we really want to reinforce our spine. We wanted to uh, have add a little bit more veteran experience. You know, uh, that analytics can be uh, complicated sometimes. Sometimes they're really simple. The guys in the middle of the field are on the ball the most often. The guys are on the ball the most often. Sometimes it helps to have right. some more experience. I'm just, you know, if you have a transcendent talent like Thiago Almada, you know, fair enough. But the reality is we had two of those DP spots, those, you know, and that's Giacomakis and him. And the rest of the guys, we got to make do on more value budgets. And so it helps us to have, I think, a little bit more experience there. Mayumba is an example of that. And it has been a little frustrating watching this team this year. Explosive offensively, but 
porous defensively. I know you guys are trying to close that gap, though, clearly. Yeah, we, we are. And, and it was one of those where, you know, I think a lot of people approached and said, hey, you signed uh, a couple of wingers and, and uh, a midfielder. Like, what are you doing about the, you know, the, the – hey, dummy, the defense is the problem. <laughs> yep, yep. And, uh, but if you look at it, we really tried to rebalance the team. So we moved Caleb Wiley back to left back. Um, we had to move Andrew Gutman out. Is that more his natural position? Uh, you know, I, look, he's 18 years old, so, so I, think, I think no one knows for no one sure knows yet, yet. But I think that, look, yes, there's definitely a case to be made, a supportable case. He's a one-on-one defender, so he's got to some starting points. Um, and, and, again, lose a good player in Gutman to do that, but you have to make some changes in order to try to make the team better. Um, you have that. You've got Luis Ram right now as that left center back going in, a place that Parada's played a lot in the first part of the year. And then Miles Robinson's been gone the last two months with a national team. Right. So it's almost like I had a player. So now if you go – Boom, boom, boom. Three of the guys across the back four are new and new as a unit. And now you put Mayumba in front of them. All of a sudden, you have kind of remade the defense in terms of that's half your team now that looks a little, a little bit more cohesive, you hope. I always think uh, in the NBA, defense comes down to a, a desire to play defense. Mm. And you talked about him being a, a good uh, one-on-one defender. Can you coach that? Is that just natural talent? How is it different from the NBA where I still think it all comes down to desire? Yeah, look, I, I, there's an element of that for sure. But uh, when you talk about one-on-one defending, the most similar thing is probably a quarterback in the NFL. You got to be able to move your hips. Right. You got you got to be yeah. able to turn you in. You got to pivot. You got to be able to yeah. drop. Yep. And you're going to get beat at some point. You got to have a short-term memory, and you got to be able to close explosively. When that ball goes in the air, when that guy's going to go for a cross, you got to get him. You got to get his head down. You got to try to give him no time to uh, react to make the play. And this Carlos Lagerway guys joined us here at Atlanta United's training facility. Yeah, I know that uh, we joked around with Carlos about it. I hated it not being that party for the League's Cup because obviously Messi, and that's a whole other phenomenon we'll talk about in a second. But it just seems like the Seattle game and, and some of the parts against Cruz Azul, it just seems like you, you see what you're striving for and you see it coming together. It, it really was. It, I mean, that Cruz Azul audience for me was really cool um, to have that multicultural audience you know, right. from, from different parts of Atlanta and have everybody come together in Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Mm-hmm. That's definitely we asp- something we aspire to have as an audience. That tournament, um, you know, in terms of Apple subscriptions sold, hundreds of thousands of subscriptions sold in Mexico, right. um, overall subscriptions for the league doubled in that time frame. Um, you know, really exciting period of growth, obviously, with Messi coming, but also specifically with that tournament. Uh, right. The most watched league in soccer league in, in America is the MX. Um, more so than the Premier League, more so than, than uh, the Champions League. Unfortunately, is more Premier so League closing league. the gap a little bit because I have a lot of friends have really embraced and they're adopting teams. This, that, and the other. Yeah, look, and we ha- we hosted obviously uh, Chelsea against uh, Newcastle. Man, was there. that fun! And yeah. it was fun. And what a cool moment with Miggy, right? Oh, Miggy right. yeah. comes yeah. in, scores a goal. Yeah. There's a right. you know, standing ovation from the home crowd, and you start to see the the soccer ecosystem, right? Like, because in that moment, I know what I thought was like, you know what? I bet Miggy comes back here and plays here again at some at some point. You right. know. That this is if if this is the what the reception he's getting you know a couple years after he's left, you know who knows what the what the future holds and and you got guys like Messi coming over to play in our league, mm-hmm. uh, and you got Copa America in twenty four and Club World Cup in twenty five mm-hmm. and the World Cup in twenty six. Right, you know we are becoming the, the the hub of soccer. This is kind of cool. Talk about the revenue projections for MLS. I mean Cincinnati they br- bring an expansion team in. Nice they stadium. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, all the exhilaration the that they had. The yeah. 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 Sorry, go ahead. Interrupt. The guys in uh, Nashville were very excited when that team came about. Cincinnati as well. I just, what are the revenue projections you think? Like, I think they're going gangbusters. I mean, mm-hmm. look, specific to the Messi thing, you're talking about, you know, t- uh, tickets that are multiples, multiple multiples of right. what they will might be face value. Um, you know, packed house in Nashville, mm-hmm. packed house in Cincinnati. Both of those elimination games, League Cup final in Nashville, right. uh, Open Cup semifinal in Cincinnati, and I look, I you know, I think it's been a real testament to the to the level of MLS, right? Mm-hmm. You know. And Messi won a couple games pretty easily, look, including against us early on. Right. I think there's a little bit of stargazing that happened in some of that and yeah. stuff. And now as he's gone, you're starting to see some people step up and say, like, this guy's not going to win every game. We don't want him right. to win every game. Right. And, and, you know, and they've won eight in a row now. And um, But, you know, Nashville's up for the fight. Right. And Cincinnati was up for the fight. I mean, no, those are both cracking games, back and forth, leads, you know, going back and forth, going down to penalties. I mean, Nashville came down to the goalkeepers in the right. 11th round. I mean, you don't see that every day. And so – I think it's really great for the league from a drama perspective, from a demographic perspective. In terms right. of who I mean, it's, it's been cool because I grew up here. I was a big Atlanta Chiefs guy back in the day. There you, you go. Know? So uh, <laughs> it's, it's, been, it's been awesome to see the growth of the sport, and especially how it's uh, taken over Atlanta. And the U.S. Open Cup, you know, the, the Cincinnati match, that's one where Messi kind of, you know, they were all, you could tell, they were a little gassed. And other guys kind of stepped up, and he had the amazing assist, you know, in the, like, the last minute. So a lot of fun. And it, and I actually, I'm one of those dudes. I was like, I'm not doing a la carte. Okay, I've got the 49 bucks midseason. Go get the, <laughs> the apple. I can't lie to you. Uh, Garth Lagerway is here, guys. President and CEO of Atlanta United as we're here at the training facility. Tomorrow, by the way, it'll be a full house, right? Six five thousand expected for Nashville. 
I got great seats, by the way. I can I can yell at the I can yell at the guy. Next ticket. You know what? If I, if Becky you know plays golf with us, you gonna make it? I'd make it, yeah. All right, man. Well, if Becky's listening, if you don't want to tap out, hey, man. I, ever since we moved <laughs> to Peachtree City, I can't get to north of the airport. It's like it's are gonna cocoon, dude. With those people I used to make fun of in suburbia, behind the gated community and all that stuff. Anyway, I'm oh, sorry, I'm off track. Back to the team. Uh, the team. It just it seems like you know, you've got some pieces. When your ghost is healthy, this thing just goes. We know we're gonna score. It goes gangbusters. What a stud this dude is. Yeah, literally highest uh, goals per game in the league right now. So right. we're really, really good signing by Carlos and his team. Um, and look, it, it felt optimistic against Seattle. Like when the way the ball right. moved, the way we pushed the play forward, we looked like you know we had an encouraging or something. Said you know disappointing first uh, game down down there in Miami. Came back and screws us all. We responded right. You're gonna get knocked down in life. It's how you bounce back that matters. Lost the penalties, but we had a really good response. Now we come out against Seattle against a good team on the road. And coming off a long break, and you know we, we, we were prepared and we, we did well, and the new guys look good, Zande and Miyumba, and now we got Saba coming into the team, maybe as soon as uh, tomorrow. Work so, with the work visa stuff is that what it was? Or yep, work work, work visa delay, but he's okay. you know he's here now and he's you know he's available and stuff like that. Right. And we still got one more uh, Jamal Tiari coming in for Senegal hopefully next week. So right. you know if every week we get a player better, that, that hopefully right. bodes well for where we're going. Saba's from Georgia, the other one. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it's, and the other thing is w- with this, you get, you're still in the playoff hunt. I mean, and if you if you can beat Nashville, because I think we're points wise we're tied. I think they have one more win than us, but it's a huge game on Saturday. It really is. It is. And look, maybe you're catching them at a good time. They just played seven times in three weeks. You know, mm. it's, a, it's it's tough emotionally to right. come back. You wow. lose a final like that, so you got right. them. And look, we got Cincinnati on Wednesday coming off that that semifinal in the Open Cup loss right. as well. So we got to take advantage of those things for sure. And um, you know, stretch run for us. You know, nine, mm-hmm. nine games left. I think eight of them are playoff teams. So right. it's not gonna be easy. And I know we uh, we talked about this with you. I think a few weeks ago on the radio. It sounds like Messi's leaning towards playing on field turf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said well, that. Be I thought he absolutely said he would. Yeah, he he never said that. People always said it's kind of a misnomer, but a lot of the elite guys for some reason won't play on the stuff. But we're gonna yeah, find out. Some of that goes back to Beckham, and Beckham said some stuff like that around 2007. But to be clear, you you are right. Messi said unequivocally. I played on turf as a kid. It's been a right. while, but I can play on turf here. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be just fine. And that'll yeah. be electric. And that'll yeah. be, especially for him with Almada, the whole thing, all the dynamic there. That's going to be something. And then, uh, I guess, finally, the uh, speaking of Almada, uh, you expecting someone to throw some heavy money at you in the winter? You know, it, we, uh, these things are always, you know, it, the, we're working together, right? right. We, want, we want to do what's right, right for Tiago. We want to do what's right with the club. And, and look, a transcendent talent like that at some point, probably the moment will come. Mm-hmm. Um, but we're in no hurry, um, right. you know, and... I think, you know, again, when a player like Messi comes to your league and you see the, the jump in attention, the jump in level right. of play and stuff like that, maybe Thiago's not in as much of a hurry to go either. Were you a Ronaldo guy or a Messi guy? Uh, look, I mean, it's, it's hard to now look back and to say objectively, right? Because every, right. everybody's a Messi guy now. <laughs> right, you know, right. Everybody's well, prisoner of the I, moment. I, yeah, how would I? I mean, look, yeah. I mean, I, I might try to beg off and be like Mbappe. Uh, you know, <laughs> at, at, at yeah, some point, when, when, yeah, when he won the world. Wait, did he take take so. the uh, Saudi Arabian money? Wasn't it like a threw a billion dollars at him or something yeah. crazy? Well, they threw a billion at, at Messi and he turned yeah. it down. Yeah. Um, and then Bobby, and then who's more relevant on the world stage? I look you know what I mean? That's the thing. Ronaldo's basically playing an anonymity, anonymity over there. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And, and as much as you can be anonymous with 500,000 Twitter followers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but no, when you, when you right. say what's relevant, right? Right. right. Messi's won seven Balloon Doors, right? Now, it's mm-hmm. not the best player in this country, best player in the world. Right. That is Tom Brady plus LeBron James. So right. just from an athletic achievement. But they're going to put him on their currency. Yeah, that's it, it's nuts, right? And, <laughs> and, and I mean, that's a true story. Social media following. He has mm-hmm. five, I think, 500 million or something. Crazy. Like, you know, social media followers. I mean, that is right. Taylor Swift. Pop mm-hmm. star, you know, mm-hmm. type stuff. So, uh, pretty amazing when you put it in those terms. I mean, this is the moment in time. Just won the World Cup. Coming back, you know, it, it, to the to the Miami. Let's face it, the best community right. for him to play in terms of cultural fit and embrace him and all that stuff. Miami, it's the perfect time for them because they're trying to build a new stadium. Mm-hmm. They're trying to really step up in class. Right. You know, it it just worked. It is going to be funny because they were dead last when these guys basically parachuted in. Mm-hmm. Well, again, we're hoping that we're going to have a springboard to success. That's the Alamo match. Really got me stoked. Can't wait. Tomorrow, guys, uh, 7.30, right here on Attitude 9, the game with Jason and Mike. It's uh, Nashville. And what's their style, by the way, for guys? What are they going to try to do to us tomorrow? So they're super well organized, really well coached. Um, good general manager there, Mike Jacobs. Um, uh, used to be an assistant coach at Duke. Not that that's important ever to have a connection to the Blue Devils. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, they built a really solid team. They're going to play mostly defense. It's a big physical team. Okay. And then they're going to look to counter through Mukhtar, who was the MVP uh, okay. last year, the year before. One of the best players in the league. Uh, he's their number 10. They get And that's what they do. They sit and they get on the counter through him and they try to hit you. Right. So it's a tough matchup for us in terms of we got to make sure we're 
conservative defensively through the center midfield. But okay. that said, I think a lot of the game will be us coming at them. They'll, okay. they'll be consent to sit on the road. And, you know, you said, you know, we've been pretty dynamic from an right. attacking standpoint, and now we got to finish our game. Can you match their physicality? They're physically a little bit bigger than we are. Mm-hmm. So, right. I mean, you're going to have to ground the pound a little bit, right. like at some of these set pieces. But, right. um, you know, cool, look, hopefully we can pass around them, right? We're, we're, the, we're the quick right. little guys, and, right. and they're the big slow guys. And, and, uh, and hopefully the ref doesn't let them get – like I said, have it a lot in 18. There you go. <laughs> what, what do you, what do you <laughs> got 70,000 of your closest yeah. fans in the building with you? Right out. Help with, uh, getting some of your way. <laughs> right out, brother. Hey, man, good to see you, Garth. Appreciate it, man. Garth, log away, guys. President CEO of Atlanta Net.